me feel like I'm looking at Hosanna, a savior in Gabbana. I gotta go, it's like a, it's like an hour for the show, I gotta transfer intro. Welcome to Shades of Havana, I'm your host David Zimmel. We're here at L&B Cigar Lounge in Ocean, New Jersey. We're here with uh, the proprietor, Benny. One of the proprietors. And one of the proprietors and a couple good friends. Why don't we introduce uh, yourselves and let us know what you're smoking. Okay. My name is Ben. I'm half of the ownership. My partner, better Larry. Half, the better half. The be- <laughs> <laughs> I'm smoking a Top the Waihe 2003. It happens to be a very, very fine cigar. Our store is predicated with one of the larger retailers in Monmouth County. And we, one of our uh, humidors is one of the largest ones also. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jerry Robinson. I'm smoking an Alex Bradley, uh, Max. Uh, it gives me a chance to get away from the wife every once in a while. I'm George Eckstein, known as Big George Eckstein. I'm smoking a um, oh, sorry, Alex Bradley. And uh, I just turned 80 a few weeks ago. Happy and, birthday. Happy birthday. Happy and birthday. I'm married to a beautiful Brazilian woman, and all these guys <laughs> tell me, I don't need Viagra. <laughs> That's the way to start it. That's because you're not doing anything. Yeah. That's the way to start it. <laughs> so you say. <laughs> so, uh, Benny, let me ask you, I never asked you this. What, uh, how did you get into the cigar business? What? Uh, Larry and I were working at the Schneider Nelson Audi, and uh, it was time for us to leave. So I was searching out what our potentials would be. We wound up doing a cigar lounge, and this is a great, great start. Great. And how did you decide, uh, like, how many cigars to, to carry? I mean, did you guys yeah. just decide to, to have a large humidor so there was a great selection? Because you happen to have, uh, I've traveled around a little bit. I mean, I do think your humidor is uh, probably the best one I've seen with, with selection. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, what we did is uh, to build our inventory, when the customers came in here, we asked them what they like to smoke. And that's how we loaded our inventory. So as, the, as our system grew and grew, we kept on growing and we kept on putting those cigars in. And that's how we have what we have today. Only what the customer wanted, that's what we put in here. So, you know, it's interesting because years ago, um, I used to be a big uh, Cuban guy. I used to order online and... Uh, you know, like from St. Martin or whatever. And when I started coming in here and I started tasting all of the domestic cigars, I decided that it was, I was wasting my time because I wasn't sure half the time when I was buying Cubans whether they were real or not. Correct. So the cigars here got me to a point where I don't order Cubans anymore. So, I don't think anybody realizes what they buy anymore. I think guys just smoke to smoke any day of the week. You know, guys walk in, you pick something, you try something. You, there's people who have their select cigars, and you have others that just say, you know what, I want to try something different every day. Oh, the selections here are, uh, are tremendous. You, you know, you could probably smoke a different cigar every day for a couple of months and not, you know, not even cover half of what's inside. And also, they have um, a couple times a year. Uh, Benny has a uh, so-called uh, cigar that night where uh, one of the vendors comes in and he um, shows his cigars, you get a special discount and so forth and so on. It's a great way to build up your humidor because you end up buying 20 cigars and it builds your humidor up really good. How long have you been smoking cigars? Well, I'm 80 now. Let's go back um, 60 years probably. Did they make cigars back then? 60 years. <laughs> <laughs> George you rolled Washington the first ro- one. <laughs> George Washington rolled them. <laughs> did, you, um, did you ever smoke Cubans? or? I've had a few Cubans in my time, yeah few too much. But uh, to be honest, as long as I've been smoking, I really can't taste the difference between them, even though I've been smoking a lot of time. It's a nice cigar, so forth and so on. But I enjoy all the either Dominicans or uh, all the other all the other places they have the cigars. They just make them you know, really, really nice. And Benny's always good if you say, Ben, I like the cigar that is a little mellow, it's a little strong, so forth. He's going to recommend it to you. And 99% of the time, he's going to be right. The interesting thing about Cubans for me is that I happen to like Normally, I like a bigger ring gauge, like what you're smoking. Yeah. Cubans, there's very few Cubans Correct. that are big ring gauge. Correct. It's tough to find a Cuban with a big ring gauge. What so. did Castro used to smoke? He always seemed to have a big cigar. Cohiba. What was the cigar he went? What? Cohiba. Cohiba, but really, but you can't get those, can you? The real big yeah, ones. You can't. You can't. What he had, like the Espon, was it the Espondido? Yes. Yeah. 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 But it, it's tough to, but even the Espondido, I think it's well, a 52 or 52, 52 ring gauge. It's not a big ring gauge. Well, the reason for that is because 
contrary to what you're saying, the narrower the cigar, the more flavor. Oh. Because what happens is the wrapper is what gives the cigar its flavor. And therefore the ratio, for instance, on a Lancero would be a two to one ratio between wrapper and interior. As you get larger and larger, you're losing the flavor of the cigar. What would you say if, are the probably two or three most popular cigars from people that come in here? Are there two or three that people tend to... Uh... Well, probably it would be Fuente, okay? My Father and Padron. Are the three most popular? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I find that one of the things that I like about coming here is that you sit around and normally, you know, we'll have 10, 12 guys and you start asking everybody what they smoke and I, I get different ideas and I go try it out. And, it, you know, it's a good way, you know, to try out different cigars. Exactly. Yep. The camaraderie here is, is really, really good because you have all different people from all walks of life. You have doctors, dentists, you have real estate, you have so forth. And then you have the retired bums like me. But um, uh, you're always going to talk to somebody and he's going to say, you know, this is a nice cigar. And then you'll try it the next time. And every time you may try a different cigar and you get, you know, you start to put six or ten away that you really, really enjoy. What I really find is when I come here after a hard day of work, okay, I, I honestly come in here. As soon as you walk in, there's a couple guys sitting around. You sit down, you light up the cigar, you start talking to everybody. Mm. Next thing you know, the pressure just evaporates. And when I walk out of here, it's like I went to a psychiatrist. Yeah. I actually feel better yeah. on, on the <laughs> ride home. Yeah. And what's also I find very interesting is, is that, you know, I do a little bit of traveling or I go on vacation. Wherever you go in a cigar lounge, you walk in, everybody's friendly. Yeah. You can walk into a place where you don't know anybody and you sit down and in five minutes, you feel like you know everybody. But you know what though? The best part about it is you could talk about politics, religion, race and everything else. At the end of the day, you walk away, you had a good cigar, you had a good drink and it's a great evening. You and know, you're lucky you, if you don't have a fight. And you're lucky yeah. you don't have a fight, exactly. <laughs> what is the difference between a, a, a cigar smoker and a cigarette smoker? Because I did some marketing, and I'd always be out in the street, and I'd always stop somewhere, have a cigar in, in the park or something like that. And you'll always find somebody else having a cigar. And a conversation comes about. Next thing you know, you're exchanging cigars. So it's a, it, the cigar people are just a, in a, a place by themselves. That's exactly what they are. Benny, how long have you how long have you been open? We uh, we celebrated our sixth year May first. So, do you find that cigar smoking has increased or decreased or stayed the same over the six years? Yeah, we're probably stayed the same, and we got a slight increase. But over the six year period, we started off at zero, and we built up a very healthy business right now, and it's still growing. Did you ever think about doing any mail order, or no? We can't with the Pennsylvania with the. Uh, uh, mail order over there. I mean, you're buying cigars. Can't compete because of the tax. Percent. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, George, talking about politics and being the elder statesman, <laughs> what's, your, what's your take on the election? Well, I admit I'm a Trump man. I know he's a little wacky, but uh, looking at some of the Democrats, it a bit scares me because none of these people look qualified to run this country. I mean, Biden's is almost as old as me. And uh, his teeth are slipping I'm out when he's on TV. looking at you right TV, now, to be honest with you, I would definitely not vote for Biden. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, all the other ones there, they just don't, you know, they, the, the problem is the Democrats, all they try to do is constantly go after Trump for little stupid little things. Absolutely, Nobody George. comes out Absolutely. saying what they want to do, what they want to do. And George, that's the problem. George, let me tell you something. Yeah. There are 29 individual investigations against Donald Trump as yeah. we speak today. Right. 29. It was 28 yesterday. It's 29 yeah. today. Now, and he's got 12,000 lies or misfalse statements as quoted by the Washington Post. So this is the president of the United States? Are you kidding me? But let me Here's, a, go ahead, Jay, go ahead. No, Here's go ahead, my thing, though. You know what? And I got to look at it this way. You got to give a guy a chance to try and run the office. It's not something they, they they're prepared to do every single day. Oh, I disagree week. with that. No, I, no, who, no, who, no, who, no, no. Do no. you go to school to the, go be a, pr listen, a president? Listen, you you sit listen. there and turn around. Yes, Trump you get into politics. Know what he is doing? Nobody so knows state. what they're ever doing. Better. Listen, Harry Truman knew what he was doing. Eisenhower but wasn't alive when Harry Truman was, 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 was the president. I mean, yeah. well, but, but it, 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 the stock market, as well as it's doing, has nothing to do with Trump. He could take credit for it, but it really has nothing to do with them. And or, no, or any president. Up or, or down. No president. No president could take control of the stock market. 
Nobody. But you don't think the economy in, in overall is, is doing okay with Trump? You think if a Democrat was in, that the economy would be stronger than it is today? I could say yes, but then I would be wrong. I would think that the President of the United States has an obligation to hire his cabinet officially. Now, under Trump organization, there are six cabinet officials who had to leave because they were the swamp. The swamp was something he planned on doing. They were involved in miscarriages, airplanes, this, dining room tables, whatever. They had to leave. Well, what do you got, you got General Mattis? He left because he realized what was going on. That man, if you sit there and you actually take that man's methods, and he's a very intelligent man. I've actually heard him speak before. You have a gentleman, it, it, Trump, I, it, it, to a point, has as a commander in chief, he is the leader. He wants something done, he wants it done. Whether it's right or wrong, he is still to follow that man's lead as you go along with it, listen, whether you like it or no, not. No, listen, listen. I don't understand as a black man how you could even support Donald Trump. It's there not is, about he's supporting, it's not he's about, an absolute it's racist. not There's about, no about supporting that. him. It's about, as a commander in chief, he was elected into the position. Many of if you were elected in the position and you said, hey, this is well, how I want to do you talk about elected that into person. the position. First okay. of all, he lost the popular vote by three and a half million votes. So did a lot he of other it. presidents, but they still Absolutely. became presidents. They still became presidents. <laughs> president. But the man does not know how to govern. There was not one single positive step that you could say Donald Trump has done. Give me who a positive knows, step. Who you knows give how, me one. Let He's me ask you, you don't think there's been U.S. companies that might have moved out of the United States that he kept here? I, I tell you, no. Absolutely not. Betty, let me ask you this. Yeah. Then, then who truly knows how to govern? Like I said before, it is one of those things you're not, you don't, you're not born into a presidency. You don't go to college. Yeah, you learn about politics. You learn about the amendments and whatnot. But you yeah. as an individual, you have your own beliefs that you have to go in listen, and follow. Listen, that you let me follow. tell you something Ethics the way it works. Ethics and value, one on one. It works on the cabinet, okay? You choose the very best person you could find. And then you sit them down at a table and they tell you what's good or what's bad. And then you ultimately make the same decision. So who, who out of the Democrats do you think is the right guy, person? Not guy, could be a woman. Yeah. Well, who do you think is, I, if you had your choice, who would you choose as the Elizabeth Democratic Warren. candidate? You would pick Warren? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Really? Yeah. And re the reason being what? Well, because first of all, of her schooling, she happens to be a very accomplished attorney. She was a head, of, she taught at Harvard Law School and she knows every single thing about our government the way it should work. Donald Trump has no idea how it works. He works on a seat of you don't his think, pants. You don't think Elizabeth Warren is a total socialist? Oh, absolutely not. Not? No. No, no absolutely no? not. No. Okay. No, that's going to be the big drag on her because they're going to say she's a socialist. She's not a socialist. What's your take on Biden? Well, right off the bat. <laughs> <laughs> That's a problem right That's there. Problem right I never there. heard That's Benny say that. It's not, a, it's not a problem. Joe Biden happens to be around for 40 years, okay? He was in the Senate, congressman, he was into the Senate. He knows the way the government works, okay? Would he be a, a decent president? Absolutely. But my, my inclination is I like Doesn't Elizabeth Warren want people not, not to pay for school? No, that's Bernie. That's Bernie. I think Elizabeth Warren no, said the same, she said she the same thing. thing. She, she says, doesn't want the college kids to. She you know, actually, I think, even said that she was going to refund money to, to, to the kids that had school loans. She was going to take away the schools. Where, where's the money coming from? Coming from your pockets. From us. Right. <laughs> it's coming from my pocket. Coming from my pocket. <laughs> it's true. College tuitions today are just out of sight. They really are. You know, they're approaching sixty, seventy thousand dollars if you're going to a large school or whatever. There's something has to be done about that. There's no question about that because again, the very, very rich can pay for it. The middle class, no, I can't afford sixty grand a year. If I got two kids, one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year. I don't make one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year. Okay, Look, so yeah, something I, has to be so, done. So uh, let me ask you a question. So this this girl from New Jersey the other day, she gets kidnapped from a playground. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, let me tell you. First of all, that scared the shit out of me because I was asleep taking a nap, and all of a sudden the alarm goes off. You know they have uh, them on your phone now, on your, on your, on your phone, and you're like, what? What the hell? So is I this? was at, so I was at the dinner last night in New York, and I'm in a restaurant, and around eight fifteen, 
the Amber Alert went off. Everybody's phone in the restaurant started going crazy. Yeah. It was almost like you were in a, a you had they to hit the shelter. There was a war. There right. was a war coming on. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. I can't believe that in today's world that you take your kid to a playground and you got to worry that someone's going to come along. I remember when I was a kid, my mother would take us to a store. She would go shopping and me and my brothers would run around the store, yeah. play, do our thing. And she never had to worry that we weren't going to be there. Today, if you take your kids out someplace, you got to keep your eye on them 100% of the time. What do you, what do you think, what, what has changed over these years? And, there's, and, and, and don't take this personally, but there's a age difference. I'm 30, you're, you know. Do back, I look that much older? 40. Than you? Do I really 40 look that much 40 older? 40 is beautiful. 40. 63. 63. You know, 63. <laughs> there's a 30-year 30, 30 difference there. You know, what has changed over these years? What have you seen that has changed? Yeah, that's a good question. There's a lot of things that have changed. I mean, you know, I, I, re, you know, I look at the police today. You know, the police years ago used to be able to do their job. Today, there's no respect. For there's them. No, no respect, respect whatsoever. No respect. I mean, they're throwing water on the police, and the police can't do anything. You saw the shooting in Staten Island. There's a guy with an armed gun started shooting at a policewoman. He actually shot her in the oh, hand. Oh, I saw okay? that yesterday. Yeah. And yet, people stood around. Booing the police, throwing stuff at them because this, this actually it was a woman police who was doing her job. This is what's happened. People don't have the respect. What but do you know what the police? Is, what do you think the difference is? Um, one, it starts with family. Uh, two, I think there's too much too much liberalism going around. When I was a kid, I was afraid of the police. Not afraid of them, but if they came around and so forth, you respected them. Okay, everybody respected the policemen. You look for their help. Nowadays, people just, you know, want to just pelt water at them and do something. Maybe, we, you know, especially New York City. New York City has become ridiculous because it, they just don't respect the police at all. They don't respect them at all. One of the biggest things is, and, and, and we see it every single day, media, whether you have a cell phone in your pocket or you have a camera or the, the news has taken that story and has flipped it three times over, it doesn't matter. It's all over. You can't go without taking two seconds without using the bathroom without somebody with a phone coming out of their pocket. It's disgusting, you know? And law enforcement, you go and you think you're doing the right thing and you're, you're castrized because you're going and you're reprimanding someone and you're locking someone up. It, it's disgraceful in this what day I, and What age. I think is the worst thing is the so-called media that we have, CNN, NBC, ABC, so forth and so on, they come out sometimes with stories. And then you find out two days later, the story's not true. That's just not like true, they came George. Out. They That's just George. Wait, let me finish. That is not true, George. They just came out with the thing it's accusing. It's not true, George. Okay. They it just came out true. accusing the guy who just became the Supreme Court judge. The story was fake. But when they come out with Benny, the story is that, that Benny, they were, is that true? Yeah, of course not. It is wait, true. George, 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 listen to me. The New York Times, the Washington Post, the Los Angeles Times, the Miami Herald, they're all credible newspapers. They're all George, liberal George, newspapers, George, George, they're credible. On, they're all there liberals. is no fake no, news. It's no. fake because of Donald Trump. No. Hold, hold, hold the, hold George, the, can I, can I interject? Can I interject? No. Uh, hold on, hold on. Sybil, can I interject? Who was the guy a couple of years ago that they found? Brian, uh, what's his name? He was, oh, oh I'm in the... Uh, yeah, Brian, uh, uh, the guy that did the news where he said he was in the army. And yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right? right. I, I mean, Ben, I mean, the There's guy... There's too much fake news, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think fake news. I think, it, 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 well, it's fake, and I also think that every station puts their own spin, spin. on yeah, exactly. what happens. Well, how do you so, explain Fox, then? Well, you got to have someone you to defend Trump. How do you explain yeah, CNN? <laughs> I, well, how do you, how I, you I get what you're saying. Listen, listen, listen. That's the whole they problem with our country. The That's the, the whole problem. news the way it is presented. Case closed. Fox does not. They're up, what's his name's ass? Donald Trump. And they're trying to get him elected, which is impossible. He will never get elected. You don't He's got 31%. You don't think Trump's going to win? He's no, gonna absolutely win again. not. Oh, oh he's going to win. Not. It's going to be the worst defeat ever, and no. rightfully so, because okay. he's ruining our democracy. He's absolutely ruining so it. He stopped every single investigation. He's not allowed to do that. Well, he is. He, <laughs> the president, he can do what he wants. That's the problem. Well, he, thinks, he thinks he could do whatever he wants. Well, he's wrong, some, though, George. Uh, listen, we had some other presidents that were just as bad, okay? Name one. You want me to go back to all of them? <laughs> yeah. So wait a minute. Hold You're on gonna be here forever. <laughs> so you, for a long time, you, you were happy with Obama, what he did? Oh, absolutely. You like oh, Obama? Well, first of all, he's the most credible president that, that we've had in the recent years. Obama. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. Look what look what Trump tried to do with Iran. 
He came in because Obama put this thing in. Oh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to tear it up. I mean, well, look what happens when he tore it up. What do you think about Iran now? So if they find out that Iran actually did bomb Syria. I think Saudi Arabia will do something. That I, we shouldn't do it. No. Hey, they I, should do it. They bombed their place. George, they should do it. George, I, I, I agree with you on that, but I don't think. That's the first thing I agree with you. But I don't think I don't think Saudi is going to is going to take the first step. I think uh, uh, U.S. is going to be the one. U.S. uh, Here's the thing: when you go when you go after fuel, it it becomes a different thing. Fuel is like liquid gold; it doesn't matter. You you've hit a you've hit a heart of a country that knows that's where most of their money is coming from, and you know what? The U.S. is going, well, we had to tap into our own reserves now. We're going to make somebody else feel this as well, whether it's us or it's whether the Saudis. We're going to back the Saudis one way or another. Yeah, but isn't it like when we got involved with Vietnam, it wasn't our war. It wasn't yeah, our it was war. Wasn't. So, Correct. but what, is, is this our war, though? I mean, is it because no. oil's involved? No. I mean, I it's think that it war. would be a big mistake. No. But we don't, we don't get that much oil from Saudi Arabia. Why does everybody say no, that's that Saudi right. Arabia? They give them... Three, four percent. That's all we get from Saudi Arabia. We so we're the number one exporting country. That three, country that for three oil. four percent. If even though you look at it as very small numbers, it's really a big number in the long run. Um, over the years, I mean, what did we go into all these other Middle Eastern countries for? We went in there for the fuel. We weren't going in there for the fight. We were going in there for the fuel. Money. We needed to say exactly right. money. Right. Call it what right. it is. Yeah. You went in for the green. You saw what it was. Dick Cheney. That's why. Dick Cheney. Dick Cheney. <laughs> Dick because Cheney. I think what will happen is, is that if we end up going to, to war, it'll be, it'll be, it'll oh, be a it'll terrible be a disaster. Thing. Yeah. It would yes, be a disaster. Yeah. No, I no, think Trump wanna... will not go to war. I really do. No, because no. it'll kill him. Because I think polls, originally he said he was going to, yeah. but now I think he said that he yeah, changed his mind. Flipping, let me, yeah. let me ask you this. Uh, other day, uh, I was sitting there, me and my girlfriend, we were watching Dave Chappelle. He has a new stand-up one on Netflix. On Netflix, yeah. It's called Sticks and Stones. Right. And I... It's kind of ironic. My girlfriend, she's a um, a psychiatrist, works for a big group out here. He starts out, first of all, singing 1989 from Prince. But then he stops and he talks about Anthony Bourdain, how he has the greatest job in the world. He travels, tastes all these different foods and whatnot. And he goes, Anthony Bourdain goes and kills himself. I sit there and I go, wow, yeah. You know, you, you think about it. You have everything. You're on the top of the world. Boom. Then he talks about this guy, another guy, I forget what the guy's name, we'll call him Charles. Charles goes, Charles is a lawyer, big money, ends up marrying a girl from college, turns around, gets divorced. She takes him for everything he had. He had nothing, right? Charles now, Charles now works in a footlock or whatever, and Dave Chappelle says, I walk in there, I go and buy shoes, I see Charles, and I ask him, what happened? He goes, oh, I got divorced. And Dave Chappelle turns around, looks at him and goes, well, shit, if this man can go and sit there and turn around and get another job and not kill himself, but then Anthony Bourdain turns around and kills himself. What, what, what are we looking at here? What has gone so wrong? What is, what is mental health I turned mental, into? I think mental health is a big problem. It's a big, yeah, big, yeah, yeah. big so we don't, issue. We don't look after the people. Okay. We now don't look after you know the people. Talk about, let's talk about guns on the street. Guns on the street. The President of the United States will not, will not allow any background checks because the NRA called him and said don't do it and he's going to consider his base so he's going to allow all these AR-15s now I don't know who was in the military but I was and let me tell you something an George, AR-15 George you were go, you in the military no those guns should be banned I agree with you 100%. oh yeah but Trump is not going to do that so that's why when you go to Mitch McConnell Mitch McConnell says the president of the United States is not going to accept anything that we put forward. But not only that, but I can't embarrass the Republican senators here. I can't have them vote for it. And then Trump takes it and he will not sign the bill. Do you think bill. the Democrats so, will do something different? Well, they've, well, they're trying. They already got a bill, you know. Ben. But the idea is you got to get rid of those AR-15s. You have to. So talking about other things in, in the news, Antonio Brown. I'm a New England Patriots fan, okay? Best team I've ever seen. You, you know, we've... I'm a giant fan. Over the right years, I, I always say Belichick is one of those guys. He takes, the, he takes the bad boys, turns into good boys. You know, they're, yeah. like, they're like altar boys by the time they leave New England. Um, he leaves Oakland, which I... I think Oakland knew what was going on. He I, he had his whole. Uh, I guess it was a, a, a ele- uh, there was a rape yeah, allegation. Yeah, yeah. Um, now knew. there's a yeah. second woman that's come forward. Yeah. One of my biggest things is 
you, you look at this and you say, okay, first question is. Well, wait, hold on. Just wait. He didn't leave Oakland because of that situation. No, but I, no, no, he no. didn't. But I no. want to, yeah. my okay. first question, that's what my first question is right. going to is, did Oakland know about it? Was, there was Oakland, was that one of their reasons for letting him go? No, they, well, they claimed they didn't know anything they about it. They didn't know anything things, about so they it. they didn't know about it. But, but let's, let's be real. Now, it's all of a sudden, a week later, it shows up why he's in New yeah, England? Yeah, yeah. Well. George. You're you're more of a conspiracy uh, person than I am. Well, I, I you know I, I mean I, I I still believe uh, that uh, it was not that it was set up, but uh, I, uh, the right England knew what was going on, and that's why they grabbed them. They knew what was going on. Um, you know, we look at this, and they haven't. The NFL hasn't suspended them yet. No, they've allowed him to play what two games now, or one game, one game, one game since he's in. Right. You know, anybody else in the NFL, as soon as they've heard something, it's an automatic suspension. Now, why is this all of a sudden, uh, oh, you know, he's going to continue to play, continue to play every week uh, up until something else comes what out. But you, now what, we have two allegations. What do you attribute New England's success to? Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick. There's no 100%. other way to say it. Tom Brady, listen, I, I say this, and I, I got to kind of refer back to, to New York. New York just turned around and, and sat Eli. For the, this is going to be the first weekend they sit Eli. Eli can't go throw the ball, catch the ball, and score the ball all at the same time. Right. Belichick turns around. He uses every player with on that field. It doesn't matter if you are the lineman, the quarterback, the wide receiver, the running back. You are some kind of asset on that field. You're going to be used. You're going to work your ass off for him. Okay? He turns around. Hey, I can create plays all day. I got to put the guy that's in there that's going to make that play a successful play. Not only that, but he's the greatest cheater ever to be head. Here we go. So <laughs> Here we go. Uh, with all of his credentials and all of his wins, he's got to cheat. Benny. He's got to cheat. You know, I worked with a guy who was a trader on Wall Street. He was making $20 million a year. And then all of a sudden, something happened. And I said to the one guy, he says, why do you think that happened? His name was Boski. He's because Boski could make $20 million, but he didn't want $20 million. He wanted to make $100 million, so he started to fool around. You don't think some of the stuff that Belichick d d did is done by other teams? Oh, I, I can't speak for everybody. I only could speak for what I know. So, and that so, is, so let me ask you this. Because he got caught twice. Okay, he got yeah. caught twice. But he walks in. What do you mean, in, okay, he got caught twice? Right, he got hold caught twice. Right, he got yeah, caught he twice. Got, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. He got caught. Benny, Benny, let me, let, me, let me throw this out here. He got caught twice, okay? And the year that they're down 28-0 in the Super Bowl, they come back to beat Atlanta. So what, did they cheat in that, in that Super Bowl? Did I'm they come in? And, did that they, was a coach at Atlanta's fault. They kept the same game plan that he had to. If he would have kept the same game plan, he could have beat New England. No. Belichick got caught twice. Name me another coach that got caught twice. Name it. So, do you think, even though you're a New Can't. England fan, if you, if you take the Giants situation, do you think it was the right decision to sit Eli? No. I think you. Here's the thing. And going back to what I was saying, you've got a man in that position. He's won you two Super Bowls against a dynasty like the New England Patriots. You don't take a guy out of there during midseason. You either should have taken him out in the, uh, in, in the offseason or you wait it until you get lost in the playoffs and you say, okay, Eli, here's your money. You walk away. See you later. That was disrespectful to the man himself. He's I done, he's yeah, done an outstanding yeah, I, job right. for the Giants. Correct. As much as I don't like the Giants, right. he did an outstanding job for the Giants. Listen, I'm a big Giant fan, and I hate to see Eli go, but I think the years have finally caught up with him. If you watch him... He has no mobility whatsoever. The quarterbacks in the NFL now, all of them have mobility. He doesn't have that. You but see George, him go back. Neither does, neither does Tom game. Brady. He, Tom he Brady's never had mobility. <laughs> the guy competed 70% of his passes the last game. 70%. What do you want him to do? 100%? Oh, the problem is know. it's not Eli's fault. In other words, no, no, the defense no. is terrible. Yeah. Oh, it's Can I, so it is, yeah. Let me, let me George, what do you feel about New, uh, excuse me, about New York uh one in the uh, Eastern. New York Yankees, one in the Eastern. How you feel right now about Very that? Very good. I'm a diehard Yankee I know fan. you. I look at you. I'm that beautiful hat Yankee. Got my hat on. <laughs> so, yeah, what, what can we do, okay? What is it going to take to make this place, you know, let's say more like when I grew up as a kid, a better place, or as Trump said, make America great again. What do we have to do to make this country safer? Well, what you, don't, what you don't have now is you don't, I mean, you have Democrats and Republicans. And years and years ago, they were able to work together to get this country to back where it is. Everybody who's in Congress and so forth, not everyone, but they all seem to have their own little 
this way, that way, this way. If they get together, we can make this country, whether it's a Democrat in there or a Republican in there, they just don't gel together, and that's what's bad. And that's why we have elections, yeah, but, but we don't seem to, to put the right people in. Yeah, but that has nothing to do with the question, George. How, socially, how do we put this country back to where it was? Well, it starts, that, forget about the Democrats and Republicans. But it starts there. No, it's not no, there. No, no, I think it's not I think there. the problem is is that the internet, as great as it is in many aspects, it's it's terrible. You know, like for instance, when I was a kid, if I wanted to see nude pictures, yeah. I grabbed the National Ge Geographic or a Playboy. Yeah. Yeah. Today, kids of all age can go on the computer and look at all the porn they want. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. it it I think that's a huge problem. And I think this is something that's been brought up years ago. That nowadays, when I was a kid, 99% of all wives were home. Nowadays, because of the economy, a lot of wives have to go to work. Takes away from the kid who comes home from school by himself, does what he wants. Some kids are really, really good, and some are not. That has a lot to do with it. But economy, economical-wise, it's difficult. Women have to work to support the family. I think right. it, it might take in and. in going back us as Americans so we got we got first thing we have to do is we have to work on our own country we can't keep uh, you know trying to work on the world's problems we've done that for so many years and it always comes back to hurting us in the long run yeah. whether it be financially uh, mentally uh, physically we end up hurting ourselves because we go and send ourselves out there to go uh, assist other countries um, one of the as a young as a young kid, and during 9/11, we just had 9/11. Uh, the anniversary just happened last week. Somebody said to me, he says, "The day that Americans actually all came together was the day after 9/11." Yeah. Didn't matter who you were, right. race, religion. Only time creed, in my life. That it was happened. the only exactly. time in my life, and as a young child, I experienced that. You have to look at some of these things and say, you know what? Does it does it have to take a tragic for that to happen? It doesn't. Yeah. The, the gesture of us coming in, right? So I, I, before, up to about a year, a year and a half ago, I didn't really know you. But you know what? A handshake, hey, how are you? How's your day going? Good, good to see you. Now, hey, what's going on? Well, that's well, the well, positive of a cigar. That's the positive like of a cigar. Thing is, People come in, yeah, and right. all, we, we all come from different backgrounds. We all have our own opinions. At the end of the day, we could all sit Correct. around and be friends exactly. and have, our, have an, a, a, a disagreement where everyone have their own opinion. However, we walk out of here and we're friends. On that note of unity, let's have a simple toast to Shades of Havana. Well Enjoy done. our Cheers. cigars. Yeah. Cheers. Right. George. Cheers. George, I can't reach you. Sir. Cheers, man. I got you. Okay, I'll pop it.